So we are once again going to take a look at another bit of sound design here in the augmented voices. And this time we'll get a little bit more experimental with it. We're going to take this to places that might not be just a simple augmented voice. Rather, we're just going to kind of try some creative uses of some of the features in here. Again, we won't be able to hit everything that there is, but we'll try out as much as we can so we can get some more building blocks that you might be able to put to use in your sound design with the instrument. So we're going to work towards something a little similar to this sound. And I linked some macros that we can work on with it also. But as I said, we're not going to hit exactly this. Again, rather just experiment and sort of aim ourselves in this sort of direction. So let's again start from scratch, new preset. We have a voice and a sine wave synthesizer over back into the advanced panel. I'm going to put synth 1 over with sampler 1, so we have A with A synth and sampler, same as B. On this side, we're just going to go through and try a few different sounds. I had a male vibrato sound before. I think we'll stick with that. Get some random start in it and widen it a little bit to get a little bit in there. I'm going to bring sustain down a little bit and decay out as well as a little bit more release so that that will move. And for the synth, we can really do whatever. I was going to go for a sustained sort of sound. And I think we'll take this Dirty Voices wavetable and use that. It has a nice range within that wavetable for different colors. And speaking of which, let's get a color macro and we'll link it to that wavetable position. I'll bring it down and now on the main panel, we'll be able to access that. I think I'll get a little bit more for the travel there so we can go up a little further as we work with it. And we'll use a little bit of the filter as well here. Link that to that color so we can have that controlled by the macro as well. That, of course, also working on the sampler for layer A. And we'll lower our sustain a bit and decay and the curve so we can work with that. And I think that will do for that link, which at this point we have a fairly bright sustained sound. I might turn the color down just a little bit as we're working. And now we're going to move ourselves over to layer B. I'm going to mute these for now. And we'll start on the synth side getting ourselves a bit of a preset. I'm going to go with an analog one since this sound is just going to be fairly clean. We'll just get an analog default, just as simple as it gets. We're going to make a sine wave for three, a square wave for two, and mix those together. And I'm going to tune those down. I'll use the coarse tuning to put it down an octave. And using the filter, for this purpose, I am going to keep the SEM low pass filter just for kind of an analog subtractive bass sort of sound. I'll get the attack down and work with that decay. We're going to link that decay to the time. So I'll bring that up a little bit so we can play with it again on that front panel. Using the macro, and I'm going to bring the volume up a little bit as well, maybe a touch of resonance. And that works pretty well just for that analog sort of part of the sound. But let's layer a sample into that as well. We'll turn this on. And we'll turn the filter up so we can find something. And I do want something pretty bright to add on some transient to it in the processed or additional samples. I don't want anything too organic here. I think I went with this Robotron 84 sample before with its nice aggressive part. Let's get a random start. So there's always a little bit of movement to it and bring that filter back down. So that's more interesting now than just that basic synth was. I'm gonna bring the attack down as well just to make sure it's there at the transient. Same thing with the synth itself. And from here, we can get a little bit of an effect on just the main for now. Let's get some fairly light reverb, nothing too long. 
Just to add a little bit of space to it, and we'll go with a touch of delay as well, maybe put the low pass down on the feedback, and why not ping pong as well. High pass up a bit as well, and we don't need quite that much feedback. But from here, if you just wanted a bass line, you could go over to the arpeggiator and use that, set it to your tempo. for whatever your note is, or just actually do an arpeggio with a chord. And that can certainly be fun, maybe a little randomness on the gate. So there's some random variation on the length there. But now we could start working on putting the two sides together. One side seems to be a little bit louder right now, so we'll even them out a little. And I think we're going to just wash out layer A a little bit with some effects as well. Go over to our layer effects and let's get a flanger. That'll give some nice movement to it. Which is okay. We can wind up the B layer as well. But we don't want to go too wide since it is kind of a base right now. I'm just going to get a little bit of... Juno 6 chorus or some of that movement and maybe we do something else on here too let's go with a phaser bringing it back over here now we could probably take this up an octave down a tad. Just kind of match the sides a little better. And so we're working with a pretty cool sound. Maybe we want to do a little bit with an LFO. Let's use LFO 1. And we can put that on the dirty voices. Let's have that work on the phase distortion and in the modulation. Let's make that LFO unipolar. And we can adjust the speed here sync it to tempo, go up a little bit, and we'll use our motion to modulate the amp here, turning it down, and then we'll actually enable this with our motion macro now. So, now we have some of that control from the main panel for all these parameters. then if we wanted to just play something there can be some fun things done there and obviously we could link a lot of other parameters with that as well within those various macros onto other parameters too but even just with these few there are some good opportunities for different kinds of audible expression in our sound as we play with those and I am going to put a little bit of glide in here and make our polyphony just mono So we can slide around and that can kind of be a fun thing to do or conversely if we did want to keep things polyphonic we could turn off our arpeggiator completely and we have a nice full sound with that bass on layer b and those higher textures coming in from a using different engines in different ways and then even from there looking through all this you can still see there's a lot of other things that we could do a lot of different ways this could go even from what we've tried though as it is i think we're going to call that good for our experimental sound design and start to wrap things up so we'll go through a quick review and a few things in the next video and then you'll be ready to dig in here so i will see you in that next video